Hello students, welcome back to another lecture on lasers. In the last lecture, we try to understand the different processes occurring in the atoms when light is being incident on it. We saw that when the light is, and we took white light which contains all the frequencies. So, when the light is incident on the atoms, the atoms which are, they absorb the photons and if the energy of the photon is equal to the difference of the energy between the lower and excited level, the atoms, they absorb the photons and they go to the excited states. This process we termed as stimulated absorption. Then we studied that in the excited states, the lifetime of an atom is very, very small, typically of the orders of 10 to the power minus 8 seconds, due to which they cannot stay there long and they come down emitting photons again equal to the whose energy is equal to the difference between the energy in the two levels. This process is occurring by itself. That is why we term this process as stimulated emission. Then we studied another important process known as stimulated emission. This process occurs when photons from spontaneous emission they interact with the atoms in the nearby excited states and make them to come down emitting more photons which are but these photons are of the same phase direction and polarization as of primary photon so we see here that due to primary photon that photons are being multiplied due to which light amplification occurs and I told you that this process is the basis for laser. Now in order to amplify light we need sustained stimulated emission for in order to amplify light so in order to make a laser we need to amplify light light the probability the first point the probability of stimulated emission should be high emission should be high this is the basic principle of working of laser probability of stimulated emission should be high now in order to have high probability of stimulated emission what we should have the probability we saw that the probability of stimulated emission depends upon rho nu photon density and number n2 population density population density of atoms in higher level population density of atoms in excited state in higher level so in order to have high stimulated emission for high stimulated emission rho nu and n2 should be high this is the first point we require to amplify light now we know that under steady conditions the atoms they follow maxwell boltzmann distribution which is given as n2 by n1 this is equal to exponential minus e2 minus e1 by kt the kt is a k is a boltzmann constant t is the temperature now we know that this is a maxwell boltzmann distribution law
and distribution law. So we know that E1 we know E2 is greater than E1 or E1 is less. So from this equation there it is very easy to see that under steady state N2 is always less than N1. And it is obvious because all the atoms they tend to come to the stable state. Now we in order to make high storm rate emission we need N2 to be higher. But in steady state N1 is always more than N2. In order to make high stimulated emission we require N2 should be greater than N1. Now what do we require? We require something opposite to the steady condition. We are inverting the population. That is why this process of making N2 greater than N1 is known as population inversion because we are inverting the population. So the second condition to require high stimulated emission we require population inversion. So this is the second thing high all the point all the conditions are connected high student emission requires high population inversion now how do we achieve this population inversion large number of atoms in order to get large number of atoms in the excited state n2 large number of atoms of atoms should be pumped to the higher state to achieve population inversion. This process is known as pumping. Pumping can be of different ways. It can be by flashing light. Pumping can be done through electrical discharge depending upon the what material we are using. Whether we are using a solid material or we are using the gas material. That will decide what pumping mechanism we will choose. Now, in order to achieve we will we have pumped lot of atoms in the higher excited state but the lifetime the lifetime of atoms in the excited state is very less is very less very small Typically, I told you already, order of 10 to the minus 8 second. So, we have pumped a lot of number of atoms. We have achieved population inversion, but this is not enough. So, in order to achieve population inversion, we require some additional thing in order to achieve. So, they come down. So to achieve population inversion, we require metastable states. We require the atoms, those atoms which have metastable states. What are these states? Metastable states are those states where the lifetime of the atoms is typically little more compared to the excited state. Lifetime of the atoms is more than, there is no less or more in physics. We need, so it is relative. 
when we speak more or less so the lifetime of the atoms is more compared to excited state and it is the typically of order of 10 to the power minus 3 seconds so this is the third requirement in order to achieve population inversion so now for light so if matter stable states are present then it is easy to achieve population inversion if we have population inversion then there are large number of atoms in the excited state and if we increase the photon density also then we can have high stimulated emission due to which light amplification takes place so this will achieve population inversion which in turn which in turn will increase stimulated emission and which will help in amplifying light so i summarize that for light amplification by stimulated emission emission radiation that is to make a laser we require light amplification by stimulated emission we require first large pumping so that large number of atoms are being pumped to n2 to achieve population inversion but still because of small lifetime they come down so to help population inversion we require existence of matter stable state so this was the basic principle on which which is required to build up a laser but this is also not sufficient we require we require to do something else in the construction of an laser so that we get the, all the properties of the laser that is we get a highly directional intense coherent beam of light we'll see in the further lectures thank you